Welcome, friends. We're in the end of James chapter 1 today, and truly this book is a major blessing to me every time that I study through it. And I hope that you're using these devotional studies simply as a chance to dig deeper into the Word of God. Um, I hope you've been using these weeks as a chance to dig deeper into the Word of God. For many people, they are staying home more because of the coronavirus, and rather than just simply sitting there and listening to the news and watching uh, what social media is saying and all that, and getting yourself all worked up, uh, why don't you get in the Word of God? Use this time to immerse yourself in the Word of God and in prayer and in the spiritual disciplines that will benefit you as a child of God. James chapter 1 has been talking all about temptation, and one of the things that are, is, is a temptation, sadly, to many people today uh, who profess to be believers is that they live lives that are contrary um, to what true religion is all about, what a relationship with Jesus Christ is all about. And uh, there are many people who, as Paul says in 2 Timothy 3, have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. They have no clue of the reality of the power that comes from truly knowing God and walking with him. So we look at false religion versus true religion in verses 26 and 27, and I encourage you, don't fall into the temptation and the trap of the emptiness of false religion. You say, how can I know the difference? Well, we see the difference between false religion and true religion here in, Ma in James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. It says, if any man among you seem to be religious. Now, let me just stop here for a minute. Before you get all uptight with me, I want you to understand something. I'm just delivering the mail. I didn't write this. God wrote this. And if it hits a little too close to home, then you need to do an evaluation. You need to examine yourself and see if you be in the faith. You may need to do a checkup from the neck up to find if what you got is real. Notice what God, James says, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, James 1.26. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but notice this, deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. First of all, in verse 26, we see here that false religion is vain. False religion does not change the person. It says, if any man among you notice seem, there's a key word, seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. False religion does not change the man. The Bible makes it very clear that Bible salvation changes a man. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you claim to be saved, but it has not changed you, then you need to really do an evaluation and find out if what you got was really genuine, if what you got was real, and if you really meant what you said when you said it, or were you just praying a prayer to please somebody or th or something of that nature, because friends, Bible salvation changes the man. You say, well, I'm not changed. Well, maybe what you've got is false religion, because false religion is vain, and it does not change the man, the Bible says in James 1, 26. Jesus said this, in Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 and 36, he said, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You hear what he's saying there? He's saying what comes out of the mouth is an, is an overflow of what is in the heart. You want to know what's in a man's heart? Listen to what comes out of his mouth. Then in verse 35, he says, A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of the heart, or evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Oh, friends, we need to be careful what we say, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and every idle word that a man speaks, he will give an account thereof in the day of judgment. That's one of the reasons why I'm very careful when I preach. You need to be very careful at all times, but I'm very careful when I preach 
that I'm walking in the Spirit and I'm allowing the Holy Spirit of God to speak through me because I am going to give an account for every word that I speak in the pulpit. I'm going to give an account for every word that I speak in my life. And friend, you are too. And you need to be, need to be careful what comes out of the mouth. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. False religion does not change a man. Secondly, false religion deceives the heart. It deceives the heart into thinking, I'm okay. Uh, because I'm trusting in my religion or I'm trusting in a decision that I made or whatever. But friends, we need to check and make sure that what we have is real, what we have is genuine. There will be an abundance of people in the last days that are religious but lost. Make sure, friends, that you're not one of them. False religion will not change a man. False religion deceives a heart. And false religion is vain. It is empty. It has nothing really to offer a person. It says in verse 26, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. vain. Friends, I can't claim the name of Christ and continue to slander Christians and continue to speak in a way that, honors, that dishonors the Lord Jesus Christ. We talked about that yesterday. Look again, Proverbs 6. 16 through 19, especially in verse 19. So false religion is vain. It does not change the man. It deceives the heart. It is vain. It is empty. Then there's true religion in verse 27. True religion, first of all, produces compassion. It says there, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. What he's saying here very simply, friends, is that true religion, a true relationship with Jesus Christ, is one that produces compassion in our hearts. He molds us and makes us into the image of the Lord Jesus. And in doing that, he brings us to the place that our lives produce compassion. 1 John 3, 17 and 18 says, But whoso hath this world's good, and see if his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. We see as you look through the New Testament scriptures how Jesus was moved with compassion. And we need to be a people that are moved with compassion as well. By this, John 14, 15, shall all men know that you are my disciples, if ye have love one for another. But not only does true religion produce compassion, but it also produces something else. And that something else is something that people don't like talking about in this day and age. But friends, it's still in the word of God. True religion produces purity. First Peter 1.16 says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. In James chapter 1, verse 26, pure, or 27, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Friends, the Bible has much to say about the child of God keeping himself on spotted from the world, loving not the world, 1 John 2, 15, 16, and 17, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 22 says, Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. We need to be careful that we do not enter into the sins of others, that we do not condone others in their sins, and that we keep ourselves pure in the way that we live our lives. There's many other verses we could look at. Verses like Romans 12, 1 and 2, where verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me give you one more verse in the time that we have today, and then we will bring our study to a close. Romans 13, verse 14 says this, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Friends, we need to be careful that we do not make provision for the flesh and that we do not follow the desires of the flesh in our lives. I encourage you before, but let me encourage you once again. Take some time to read and study chapters like Colossians chapter 3 that talk about what we need to put off as believers and what we need to put on as believers in our life and let's be wise and listen to what the word of God says and let's do what the word of God says. Let me ask you today as we close and encourage you, challenge and challenge you, examine yourself, find out 
is what you have a false religion that is vain, that has not changed that is you, that is deceiving you, or is it a true religion, a true relationship with God that has produced compassion and purity in your life? Oh, friend, examine yourself. Eternity is too long to get it wrong. Have a great day.